smart man. And after reading all the things that I've been reading about the Eagles today, I am even dumber than I was this morning. That's right. It is getting harder and harder to calculate the calculations of the cornbread because I can't do math and I can't remember numbers. I'm getting really dumb. And I'm already dumb. But that's just the way it is. Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great day. It is hump day. Hope you are getting over the hump and um, that everything is humpity-dory with you guys. You know, last night, shout out to, to Wade. You know, here's the great thing about YouTube, for me at least, um, and for anybody who's just getting into YouTube, it, it's not easy, believe me. You know, a lot of people think, oh, you're just a content creator. You know, you just sit down, you hang up your shingle, and just let it go all roll in here. Well, it's not quite that easy. It takes time and a lot of work and effort and things to to do this, and I've got a long, long ways to go. Be that as it may, the thing that is the greatest thing about doing social media is the friendships that have come out of um, doing this, you know, from, you know, guys like Brian and, um, of course, like uh, Clarence. And uh, sadly, I miss Rasheed so much and things. But it's been great for me doing this and having those relationships. Um, another one of those really great relationships is Wade. Wade, I met in Dallas when we had a, I want to say it was a Monday night, it was a night game in Dallas um, against the Eagles. We lost that game and uh, it was not good, but that's when I met Wade and Wade has been great. You know, we haven't seen each other physically since that time, but he's always here um, on the channel and he will send me information. And it's sad because when you go through um, traumatic experiences, I'll say, with the Cowboys, where it's up and down, and you're feeling good about the team and everything else, and then the rug gets pulled out from underneath you. This is when it's good to have other people to share in with the misery as well as the good times, and unfortunately, it's been more misery than anything else um, to end the season. But he shared with me yesterday um, Brian Brodus, and before I get to Brian Brodus, I, I want to do one other thing here. Um, Twitter is, it's rough, man. When you go on Twitter, you have to have boxing gloves on because it gets ugly. And there was a tweet yesterday um, about Dak Prescott, um, prodigal heel. And here's what they said. No, a running game would have certainly got us deeper in the playoffs. I'm glad that somebody actually thinks that. that that's true. I think it definitely would have. Um, as my boy, Dem Boys Kick, said, can we just run the ball? Even Mike McCarthy recognized um, going into the season that he wanted to be able to run the football. And we just did not have the players. The ownership didn't provide it for him. But going on on this tweet, um, Dallas, uh, excuse me, Dak has a red zone phobia. All the team has to do is allow Dak to get within 30 yards of the end zone um, probably need to part ways with Dak as well. Get someone who can maintain the ball control clock management. Well, there's perception, and then there is reality. Because this was a uh, tweeted at Tom Donnelly. I'm sorry, Tom Downey. Excuse me. Tom Donnelly is the Eagles moron. Um, and he's another thing I got to get into. His response to that was Dak Prescott led the NFL in passing TDs in the red zone. Let me read that again. This person says Dak has a red zone phobia. He sucks. We need to get rid of him because he stinks in the red zone. But Dak Prescott led the NFL in red zone TDs. As in Nobody had more TD passes in the red zone than Dak Prescott. Now, you could say that that is the reason why he had more touchdown passes than anybody else in the red zone was because 
we could not run it in on short yardage and things because we didn't have a back. So we were forced probably to pass more in the red zone than other teams that had, you know, bellwether backs or teams like the Eagles that have the tush push, the one thing that they're known for. So, yes, we had red zone problems, but passing it in the red zone was not it. So that's the problem. The thing is, is as we, I, I can listen to DMV, I can listen to Game Time Brian, I can listen to Prime Time Phil, hope he's feeling better. Um, I can listen to Law Nation, I can listen to Voss Lombardi, I can listen to uh, uh, um, uh, West Coast Cowboy, I can listen to any Dallas Cowboys YouTuber, and there's a lot of great Dallas Cowboys YouTubers. And every single one of them, every single one of them will tell you, we do not have enough. Bottom line, we do not have enough to compete with the other teams. That the places we have holes are team killers or playoff killers. You must be able to run the football. If you get a book that's, Football for dummies, I guarantee you in there, there's a section about playoffs and running the football and being able to run the football. And we just can't. So the question is, now we got some good news at least. It looks like compensatory picks wise, we'll end up getting a fifth and a sixth. So if I'm correct at the moment, we have a first, a second, a third, no fourth because we've got Trey Lance, a fifth, a sixth, maybe two sixes and two sevens. Cowboys have been good at drafting, but we know we need offensive line help. We know we need linebacker help. We know we need running back help. And you're not going to get impact players in the draft that are going to be able to make a difference to make a Super Bowl run in one year, which means you must go outside the organization. Which brings me back to Brother Wade. And Wade shared with me yesterday on G-Bag Nation. I, I feel honored because I was actually a G-Bag. I guess I should be honored. One of my worst moments in life made us G-Bag of the day. <sighs> Listening to Brian Brodus. Excuse me kind of going off on the Cowboys and what we are not doing. If we are to succeed against other teams, if we are going to be a team that is going to make a run, we can't just rely on doing things the same way. The question will be is, will it be? It sounds like we're going to be doing business as usual listen in what you need to do right now if you're going to keep this team around you need to push a lot of salary into now borrow from the future break out your salary cap credit card and go on a shopping spree try to make this happen okay we all know that don't need to rehash it the question is will they try to do that how much hope would that give you and i want to believe gentlemen that because they are essentially running it back that's the only thing they could do Last year, they knew the fan base was on the ropes. So what did they do? They made two trades, Cooks and Gilmore. And, yeah. uh, you know, it kind of got us excited, made us think it was probably different. Season started, they knew it sucked, so they changed the offense a little bit. They're scrambling. They're doing everything that's still within the, the confines of their overall team-building strategy and philosophy to try to get it done. I, I think this year might have broke them. And... And now they are, they're realizing that we're going into the final year of Mike McCarthy and Dak mm -hmm. Prescott's contract. Let's uh, see what happens. You know, this came up because Dave Hellman, longtime Cowboys uh, cover r reporter, he, he tweeted about the Cowboys' options with Dak, and he said, not a single path forward looks appealing. But of the options available, I'd say you either push every chip in the middle and get borderline reckless with it, or you start looking for an exit strategy right now in 2024. I'm up for either one. I just want to believe the Cowboys won't do the status quo on us again, guys. What do you think about 
how realistic this new all-in talk is. I don't. I don't find it to be. It's. It's hard for me to buy into it. I mean, I, I will be. I'll be blown away if they do a all in anything other than just going. You know, once again, all in on Dak and giving him the long term contract. Uh, but otherwise, no. I, I don't. I expect things to remain relatively status quo. This is. This is what they're going to do. It's going to look like a very similar off season as we've seen in the past. Yeah. I mean, I. I think that they're. Maybe it, it, it's trying to be optimistic, spin it in any way positive, because they're going to run it back with the coaching staff and with the quarterback. So the only other way to sell to the fan base is like, all right, hey, we're going to be more aggressive this offseason. We're going to attack free agency. We're going to try and go out there, maybe make some big trades, whatever it might be. But it's like, man, I got to see that to believe it. You know, they did a good job, I think, last year with the trades. But it was also trades in which they gave up low picks and those teams ate a good chunk of the salary. So they were trades made on their terms. It's not like they were overly aggressive in any way. You know, I just, I, I think it's a triple-edged sword what, what they, you know, <laughs> talk themselves into. You never really build a great team. You're never picking in the top five back-to-back years where you could get a blue-chip quarterback and tackle or tackle and edge or sauce gardener. You can't get those kind of quarters in the draft. And you're essentially building through the draft, trying to find all pros while mostly picking in the 20s. There you go. This team building strategy might be the worst strategy in any sport right now going because of how it puts you on a hamster wheel to nowhere. You're doing a lot of work. You're running hard. You look good. And boy, you're, you know, you kind of appear to be like you're really running the race. You ain't running the race, man. And, and, and you're not using any of, of the tools that the champions are using to, to you push go. your team over the top. If you're Mike McCarthy, do you demand they try and help you like okay i get it you're making me coach in the last year of my deal but how about help me a little bit how about go out and try and spend more money or go out and get more players or go out you know don't just we sit around here and rely on the draft you know that's fine i win you 12 damn games the last three years there you go i hope mike's honest you know i think i would i think if i Mike mccarthy i'm like fine you want me to coach my last year here Without a contract, then okay. This, I hope this we is have what, that, Mike. Yeah, it might be job saving, Mike. Though I want another five years and twenty five million dollars, so I can stuff my my kids, um, you know, uh, trust funds even more. Yeah, he, he, he going Walt White on I, this. Yeah, you, and I, I know what you're saying. He don't need the cash. That his wife is. Don't worry about that. Okay. But the the <laughs> thing about the kids thing, are already stuffed. Don't yeah, worry about. Kid, all right. Yeah, I'm just no. But you're not wrong. But if I'm Mike McCarthy, I'm like... He said his family needs football. They don't need it for the money. Well, they just need it for the football. They just need it for the football. Yeah. You know, Mike, they're, they're fine. They, okay. They're honestly, they're fine. Maybe they'll get a pro bono but, deal worked out. Yeah, but, but to me, if pro, I'm Mike McCarthy... Sounds like wife's got something going on, she, too. She's, she's very successful. See, the thing about it is, to me, I, I don't quite get it. Because if you're, if you're going to let him coach the last year, but you're not going to do anything... Yeah. Then you might as well have fired him. You there know? You, go. you might as well just But then you would have had to pay him. Five million or six, yeah. seven million dollars. It's a lot of money Whatever. to Jerry. Okay. Yeah, he's worth yeah, nine, nine billion, billion dollars. Yeah. For, you know? for some reason he's worried about five or six but, mil. But that's only pairs his cheerleaders twenty grand each. Okay. I totally show a little appreciation totally, for the people I, that help make you great, but he, he looks at everything like I'm gonna maximize my leverage over you. I don't care how little he you does, are. He does not want you to feel comfortable. That is true. Yeah. He does not want that as the case. But if I'm Mike McCarthy, I'm kind of like, listen, you, you know, yeah, fine. You want to get us over the hump? Go get me some more players. Go spend some money yeah. beyond of what we're doing in free agency. There you, you know, go. Or, or, or like trading and drafting. Yeah, let's because, go all in, baby. Yeah. Let's go. Let, here's what the winning teams do. Here's how we build teams. If, I think it's going to take a really powerful leader, one that's not afraid of getting fired. And maybe Mike McCarthy I, is just that guy right now. I, You know what? To, I Man, I, I would I would take that chance. Yeah, you got you got to go in there and be like, dude, I, I know I, you're gonna fire me if you sure. know if if we don't win. Here's something you got to know before you fire me. Yeah, the the way that you're building a team is not good enough. 
And unfortunately, not to help us, not yeah. to help us get through the playoffs. You, like you we can need to. you can try to draft great every year, and and maybe that can keep you in the playoffs. But if you want to finish this thing and actually get to the Super Bowl, I saw the same thing happen in Green Bay for 13 years. We yeah. won one. Yeah. Everything came together perfect, and Aaron Rodgers kept us close. But even with Aaron Rodgers, a significantly better quarterback than Dak, maybe not in the leadership department, but better. Yeah. We we couldn't even get back and do it with this go. strategy of drafting and, and holding. So please, you know, let's let's go ahead and go for this. And that's your hope that this season could be different. And you know, maybe Jerry looking at the fan base and wanting to give us something to be excited about. If it's not the coach, if it's not a new quarterback, what could it be? An amazing draft, I, I think, is though I'm with I'm, Eric. I'm, I'm, I'm An amazing draft is our hope. An amazing draft has always been our hope, and our you know we've probably drafted. You know, you can go through and see a couple years where it hasn't been great and things or guys haven't panned out. But in comparison to what other teams have done, the Cowboys have made incredible strides with, with the draft. We have done incredible things. Don't get me wrong. We have done really, really well. But the thing is, is that's not enough. When the margin between winning and losing is this much, you must take advantage of every opportunity to make sure that you have the best talent all across the board. And that's where the Cowboys seem to fail. They do 90% of the things right, you know, the, except for contracts where they kind of mess up on some of them. Um, but you can look across the board and see most teams are messing up on some contracts. The thing about the Eagles, now they're looking at Cliff Kingsbury right now. Um, as offensive coordinator, they you know they're 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 looking under every rock. I don't know who they're going to settle on. They recognize they made a mistake last year with their coordinators, and instead of just saying we're just going to run it back through, they're going to try and get the best person available that can try and fix the situation. You have to actually admire that with the Eagles, the Cowboys. We have been doing the same thing, and don't get me wrong, Will McClay has done great. When you look at finding guys like Diggs and Micah or Tyron Smith or uh, Travis Frederick or Zach Martin and things, that they have found really great players. Dak Prescott, he, although that was really by luck, it was just he was the last man standing, and it's like, okay, well, I need one, so let me just take that guy. But it's not enough. And when you constantly go for guys like, you know, Clinton HaHa Dix and things uh, and think that you're going to take this group of past their prime, you know, average Joe players and put them together and become a Super Bowl caliber team when other teams are going out and getting blue chippers. Say what you will about Randy Gregory, but San Francisco already had a great team. And they said, we'll take a flyer on a Randy Gregory to give us an extra punch. We'll, we'll take a flyer and, and, and make a move for a Trent Williams, which they did from the commanders. We'll do a, the same thing with a Chase Young. We'll, we'll, we'll sign a Hargrave. I ask you, any moves that the Dallas Cowboys have made anywhere close to that? They had problems with their running. Actually, they didn't have that much of a problem. But they go out and they get Christian McCaffrey. You can't expect to be able to compete with teams that are built like that. We are literally like a World War II aircraft carrier trying to go against a modern-day aircraft carrier. You're not going to be able to compete. So the feeling is the Cowboys will continue to do business as usual, in which case... Be prepared for this next year. Don't get mad next year. Don't get mad next year. Get mad this off season when they don't do anything, when there's still a chance to do something different. Because we have a short memory, and we keep forgetting that we, in free agency, which is going to be starting soon, starting soon, less than two months, that the Cowboys will not do anything major in it. All right, good people. Hate to be a bearer of bad news on hump day, but that's just the way it is as a Dallas Cowboy fan.